Hey guys, hi Dynamic Stars. So this is a, a video that talks about um, how to do a warranty. Okay. So what's covered under Tupperware's warranty? What is our warranty? How do you do a warranty? So I'm going to pull up, um, hang on, I'm going to share, new share. I'm going to share my desktop. Okay. So you guys can see everything, I believe. Yes. So I'm going to pull up my um, text messages because I got one today. From a customer so the warranty covers cracking breaking chipping peeling it does not cover staining fading um markings that have worn off and also this so let me pull this up here and show you what i mean by that this is not covered by the warranty when this is a common one that people will will come to you with so the white under the lids here and the white in here this is just from microwaving at too high of a power um they obviously had some sort of soup because it was all at the same line um or it could have been a casserole or some sort but it probably was uh like a soup and this is just from microwaving um on too high of a power at, for too long of a period and especially when it's really high acidic or high sugar foods um these markings will happen it doesn't it's not damaging anything it didn't compromise the container everything still works just fine it just has like i call it like a tattoo mark now okay um and that goes for under the seal too so these are the crystal wave soup mugs so i went ahead and let this customer know this is not covered and they were like oh okay she thought it was like you know the plastic was damaged and and it was who you don't know you, they just they have all kinds of weird things that they think up so i just let her know that's not covered um, and then I asked her, I said, Hey, uh, what, what about these three things? Is there something cracked on these? Can't really see the whole thing because of the way the picture is. And she said, Oh no, I've just the artwork, the artwork, well, we call it artwork. The uh, measurements are fading off. And I said, Oh, well then that's not covered. Um, but you can suggest to the customer, like, Hey, the, use a Sharpie marker or something, um, to, uh, put those on. And then she did make a nice list for me of everything with the mold numbers. I need you guys to know too, that um, it's important to know that anything after those first three or four numbers. So some are three numbers. These 227 is a three number and these are a four number. They're four digits. Okay. That's what I mean by three and four. You do not need for warranty purposes to enter a request um, you do not need any of the letters or anything after the dash mark. So I always let my customers know, uh, when they're getting ready to send over the warranties, I said, just know that if you can't read, like they'll struggle with reading what this letter is or what that number is. Cause they're very tiny. They're very small. Um, I just let them know. I don't need anything after any letters or anything after a dash mark. I just need the first three or four numbers, the letters and the dash marks and the numbers after that indicate like, uh, color numbers and batch numbers. And I don't, I don't need any of that. All I need is the mold, which is that six, four, three, seven, or the seven, three, eight, six, or the three, three, eight, five. So I did already enter this earlier, but I am just going to show you guys how, um, I enter these. And this is, um, very simple. So you're going to go to your back office. You're going to log in here. You're going to go to the menu in the upper left-hand corner, click on warranty request form. The warranty claim list is the list where you have already entered the warranty request form. And now you're waiting to see when I'll click on it really quick. Now you're waiting to see when these um, become active. So they'll say pending here after I enter. So Teresa is the one I just showed you guys. It'll say pending until it's active. So hers emailed me today and it said active. Um, and on the warranty request form, all you're going to do is you're going to put your name in here not your name, <laughs> customer's name. That way on your warranty claim list, you'll see all the customer's names that you entered warranty for. So this was for Teresa Rice. I don't ever enter anybody's email except my own because I'm the one entering this order for her and entering these items into the warranty. So the first one was um, the, so the soup bowls aren't covered. I told her that the measuring cups are not cold. So these three bowl lids. So these are older style uh, seals. Let me pull up this picture here for you guys. You can see <clears throat> these right here. So these have the older little, um, tab on the side. So you can, and I can, I can tell, cause I've been doing this for so long. The mold number is also a little bit of older number, but if I plug it in two, two, seven, and then I click on this number, I don't I also don't mind the M and the dash. I don't know why that's there. So just ignore that. Okay. 
Um, so it says to ensure you receive the appropriate value from old number, blah, 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 which is not the correct number. I don't know why that's there either. Please replace with alternate mold number. You don't need to enter the R. You don't need to enter the dash. Again, it's just those four numbers or three numbers. In this case, because it's an updated newer mold number, of course, it's a four number mold number, four digit. Now, why, why do I say four and three? Our molds all started at mold number one. Okay, so the very first molds were mold number one and then two and then three. So we're all the way up into the 10,000s now at this point. So we've made a lot of products over 77 years. So I'm going to simply hit, hit OK and type in 2541. And I'm going to delete this line item also. So I have to make my window bigger, hit delete. And then I think it was 2541, right? Yeah. So do that one. And then I'm going to put there cracked. And then there was three of them. So I select a quantity of three and then a picture. So this is why you absolutely need pictures of the warranty for the customer. And I did this earlier today. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab this screenshot. And then you're going to hit this upload button right here. Wait for the little thing to spin. And now it says, congratulations, you've successfully uploaded your images. And then you can just X out of that. And it's good. Um, she also had a couple of vent and serve. And I'll show you. Um, so she had a cracked uh, luncheon thing, a lunch container, a bell tumbler that's cracked, and this seal, you can see the crack right here. And on this one, the crack was right here by her thumb. I can see it right there. So those mold numbers she listed on this sheet here, um, kid cut, pink lid, and kid's lunchbox. So 7503. See, this can be a very simple and easy process. Lunch a container, reason, uh, broken, you could put broken, you could put cracked, doesn't really matter. Just have to pick a reason and then we're going to upload the picture and then do that and then upload okay so you can go through and understand like this is how this works sometimes the mold number will be an older style we have a whole entire album in the dynamic stars group so when you go to facebook and what i mean in, as the dynamic stars group it's a group on facebook so we go to dynamic stars um there's there's some cheat sheets so if they give you an old number and you're like, oh, it's coming up obsolete. But it's, if it's a round seal, the chances are it's just there's a new mold number for it. OK, so you're going to go to these albums. You can also reach out to me and I will be happy to assist you. Um, you're going to go to this album, though, if you really want to try to figure it out. The cheat sheet guide for warranty. And um, you're going to pull this up. And let's see, 227, there's this guide here too, Tupperware seals A to Z. So we used to have seals had a letter. So it was an A seal, a B seal, a, you know what I mean? So you can also search here by mold number. So I see here 227 and what it is and what the letter was. And then the um, order to order it as a part to pay for a new one, you can put this number in, but this is the mold number. So there's a couple different ways, again, that you can find out, um, how to find the current mold number of some certain products, okay? And that's not for everything, that's just for mainly for seals. It's mainly for seals because we've updated them throughout the years to the bigger tab. So once you have all your warranties in for that customer, you're simply going to hit the review button and then you're going to make sure everything's kosher, everything's correct, and then you hit submit. I, however, have already submitted this one. I'm not gonna submit it again. I don't wanna have them be like, hey, you've already submitted this one. This is gonna get denied. So I'm going to show you the claim list. So I'm going to go over here to claim list and it's not done. This is not ready to go, ready to send out, ready to ship. This is just active now. And now we need to plug this warranty number right here into an order. And this warranty code will expire in four weeks. So these do not stay active forever. They do expire. So you're going to want to get that customer information. You can tell them the shipping is not free. It is $9.99. And we're going to go to sales here and enter a customer order. You can also add this order inside of a party if you happen to be closing a party at that same time. So we're going to go in here. We're going to give the name of this order to Teresa because we want to make sure we label that her name, Teresa Rice, save. And then you go down to the bottom here where it says warranty vouchers. And we're going to copy and paste the voucher or the uh, warranty number right there. And then sometimes I have to hit the, the space bar and then this add item uh, populates in the blue color so I can click on it. Now you can see the warranty um, voucher number, warranty code number, whatever you want to call it, is in there. So it's over here. So now you have a couple more steps. You have to click on this and now you have to add these parts 
to her order. So this was that seal. So I know she had three of those. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this three times. So I don't have um, to enter three more uh, uh, separate parts. So this was the eight ounce bell tumbler. This is the medium shallow. There was only one of those seals. The luncheon. The small seal with valve. I know there was two of those. or th No, five of those. There was five of these. And then the last item, another round seal, got that. And then there was another round seal <laughs> or rectangle seal, the medium rectangle seal, the small round seal. There was five of, yeah, that's right. And now we have one more item and that is the instant seal. So now she's ready to go and we can submit these items. So there won't be pictures. You'll just know that you had, you've already created the code with the correct parts. This is all ready to go. So now customer, ideally you're going to reach out to her and you're going to say, Hey, the shipping is $9.99 plus, plus um, tax. You can add um, any dollar amount of product onto this order and, you know, split the shipping between the warranties and the order and not have to worry about paying shipping again. If you want to order next week, you can do it all now together on the warranty order. Um, and then give them that option and they'll let them know. And then if they come back and they, and they have a big order, that's fantastic. Just be sure to let them know the shipping is $9.99 from zero to $74.99 in new retail product. And then from $75 to $149, the shipping is $13.99. From $150 to $249 in retail total, the shipping goes to $17.99. And then the final and highest shipping price that maxes out at is $19.99, which is for any orders $250 and more. So that's how you do warranties. You enter all this in, you're going to go and hit this checkout button. And then this is the payment link. Um, I typically, I don't use the email one. So just don't, don't mess with that. You're just going to copy the payment link right here for the shipping and tax. And then you can open a browser window and paste it like so. Okay, and then you can enter the payment for the customer. If they want to pay you Venmo or PayPal, you would do it like this. If they aren't tech savvy and they need you to help them enter it, you can do that. You just need to make sure you have their billing, the correct billing information for their card, along with the correct name on the front of their card. Um, all of that matters. Or you can just go ahead and text this link. Okay, you can go ahead and text this link to someone. So I'll just pretend I'm texting it to myself here. You can say, I will text this to, what is it doing here? Janelle. And then you can go here and then hit paste. And then you can text it to yourself. Mm -hmm. So that is pretty much, that's how it works. You can text it to the customer. You can do it yourself in the browser here. And then once that payment is submitted and they did it, come back to your um, order screen and then you'll see that payment will show up right here. It'll also have a little trash can next to it in case there's something goofy and they, they need, you need to delete it and re-enter it. Um, that, just know that that's why that trash can is there next to the payment. And then once that's in, it'll have you a, a blue button that'll say submit. And then you can go ahead and click submit. But you do have to come here and submit it after they have entered the payment. Okay? So that's how you enter a warranty order. I hope that helps. And thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and to learn how to enter warranties.